I didn't, Hannah kind of did, kind of didn't, I don't know. Hannah grabbed me because we were like next to each other, so shout out to her. <laughs> um, they threw the rope at me and then they were like screaming at me, there's rocks to the left. You broke. <laughs> yeah, I forgot how to hold the rope and then I remembered and I kind of like turned around, but oh. I know they said yelling, grabbing ropes out. It was the most terrifying thing ever. <laughs> But yeah, I thank everybody here. Just yeah. saying. I know they said don't panic, but like I started panicking because I saw our guide was thrown out and he started panicking. I was like, oh, yeah, wait I a minute. That. I am so thankful that you're joining us tonight. I miss you guys. I'm hoping soon we can be together in this room. Uh, we'll let you know as we kind of get updates along the way. Hey, I have an announcement for you. If you joined in earlier in the feed, you saw some video footage from summer camp, and we are still planning on summer camp happening. We do have an update for you, and this is important for you to really listen into. At this point, we have a limited amount of people that we can take. Uh, we don't know for sure the exact details, but it is going to become first come, first serve. So you are going to want to make sure you get signed up as soon as possible because you won't want to miss this opportunity. If you don't make the cut of people, we're going to have a waiting list of people because things could change, situations could fluctuate during the next few weeks and months, and so still sign up either way. We'll kind of keep you updated on that as well. Hey, we're going to go into a time of worship, and as I read in my time alone with the Lord this morning, I just want to encourage you in something. It says in Psalm 62, verses 5 through 8, Yes, my soul, find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He's my fortress, and I will not be shaken. 
My salvation and my honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for our God is our refuge. And I love that first part. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. And that's so true. Despite whatever each of us are facing, our hope comes from Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. No matter what you're facing, may he be the thing that you cling to, your hope. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you that you are our hope, a mighty fortress, our refuge, our strength, our comforter, our protector, a father that deeply loves and longs to be with his children, Jesus, and you are with us right now. Jesus, I pray that during this next hour that we spend together, that you would be our focus. May we not lose sight of you and the ways that you want to speak to us and move in us and through us, God. Jesus, we praise you because you are good, you are faithful, and you are unchanging. Even when circumstances change, you don't. Jesus, we invite you into this time that we have together. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Were creation suddenly articulate With a thousand tongues to lift one cry then from north to south and east to west we'd hear christ be magnified were the whole echoing his imminence his name would burst from sea and sky from the rivers to the mountain tops, we'd hear Christ be magnified. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let his praise arise. Christ be magnified. in me when every creature finds its inmost melody and every human heart its native cry and then it Just a doorway into resurrection. 
in life and if I join you in your sufferings then I'll join you when you rise and when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints oh my song will still be singing oh my song will be the same oh Christ be magnified let his praise arise Jesus spilled. Now 
Thank you for that awesome reminder of what you've done for us. Even though we didn't deserve it, God, you sent your son, Jesus, to die on the cross for us, to reconcile the very ones who murdered you, God, on that cross. So we thank you for that, God, and I ask that that sticks with us through the rest of this week. We can just remember what you've done for us. God, and we stay thankful at the foot of the cross for that. We thank you, we love you, and we worship your holy name. Amen. wise man once said, hey, Impact, welcome to Impact. I'm just kidding. Just giving Colin a hard time. My name is Kyle Howard. I'm one of the middle school pastors here, and I'm so excited to jump in with you guys tonight. If, if you're joining us in the chat, we're so glad that you're here. Thank you for joining in. Uh, comment along as we go. If I say something stupid, you can make fun of me. If I say something good, you can say something to that too. But we're excited. This is the fourth week of a series that we're in called Trending. And we decided we wanted to talk about some topics that we think are relevant in the season that we're in right now. And this is a season we haven't faced before. It's a very unique season. And we wanted to dive into that, think about that. We also said we want to take a look at what it means to live our faith outside of the church. What does it mean uh, when we get outside of the church, when we're not in the church together, to live out our faith? And, And really, that just means what does it look like to live out our faith right now, because all of us are out of the church. We're, we're, not, we're not able to come and, and gather together during this season, and so we're going to dive into that. We're going to talk about that, and I'm excited for what I believe God has for us tonight. And so as we dive in, uh, I brought something with me, and uh, this is a puzzle. Now, I don't know how you, you feel about puzzles, if you like puzzles, if you love puzzles, you hate puzzles. Uh, go ahead in the chat. I just want you guys to tell us how you feel about it puzzles. So on a scale of one to 10, 10 meaning you love puzzles, one meaning you hate puzzles, you would be okay if you never did another one. Tell us how you feel, because I know some people who love them. I know some people who hate them, but I think puzzles can serve as a great reminder for us in this season. Now stay with me on this and what I'm saying. And, and, and in difficult seasons, 
of our life in general, I think puzzles can serve as a great uh, reminder of something that's true. And so here's the reality. When we go through our life, sometimes we can only see a piece of what we're going through. And right now, if I'm honest, sometimes that, that, that piece that we see doesn't feel real great. And it can be a little bit difficult. And, and anybody who's put a puzzle together before knows that it's a lot easier to put a puzzle together when we can see the whole picture, when we can see everything. But when we go through life, sometimes that's not the case. We just see a piece of it. But something that I think is so good for us to remember is this reality that God sees the whole picture. We may not be able to see it, but God can see the whole picture, even when we're stuck in what feels like maybe not even the most fun piece to put together. And so uh, as we dive in, I want to ask you guys, have you ever liked the idea of something and then later realized you didn't really love the reality of it? Have you ever had an idea that you thought was great and then uh, later you, you kind of regretted it? Well, let me tell you about this, and this is what I think of with this puzzle. So uh, my wife and I are coming up on three years of being married, and uh, a while back I got this idea. I got this idea when we went on vacations. I was like, you know, you think about what do I want to get while I'm on vacation? What could be a good souvenir? And I got this idea, and I was like, you know what? What if we got a puzzle from every place that we visit together, every vacation we take? Let's get a puzzle. It, and I was like, this is this is awesome because it's something that uh, is sentimental as we come back. It's symbolic of where we went. It's somewhat practical in the sense that it's something we can actually do. I was like, this would be great. It gives us something to do uh, down the road. We can do them later. Um, and I was excited. I thought it was a, a good idea. And so uh, a few months back, back in November, we actually took a tri trip to St. Louis and that's where I got this puzzle. And uh, on the last day we went and we were looking through and this is the one I decided on. And so we got home, we put it on a shelf, put it away, and honestly didn't think much about it for a while. And then a few weeks back, uh, when we kind of started having a lot more time at home, when we were stuck at home, uh, we got the idea. I was like, hey, let's do that puzzle. And so I started to do, or we started to do the puzzle together. We sat down on a Saturday afternoon, we got a table out, and we started to put the, the puzzle out. And once I started making the puzzle, I realized, I don't actually like doing puzzles. I don't really enjoy this. After about 45 minutes, I was like, I'm kind of over this. I don't really want to keep doing this. You know, I don't mind the part at the beginning that's like, you know, the frame or the part where there's like words and stuff that you can kind of figure out and piece together uh, pretty well. But you get to a part when you do a puzzle and you get to like, you know, where it's all the same color and it's like blue sky and all this. And I was like, I don't, enjoy this. This isn't that fun. I liked the idea of it, but to be honest, I didn't really like the process or the reality of what hap happened. And so maybe you've had an idea before that you thought was great and then you didn't like the reality of it. Or maybe you had an idea of what the end of your senior year was going to look like. Maybe you had an idea of what track season or baseball season this year was going to look like. And now you're not really liking the reality of it. Now, I know you're, you're probably thinking, okay, Kyle, but that's a little bit different because you kind of knew going in what that puzzle was going to be like. And we didn't really anticipate this. I've, I've seen a, a, a lot of people graduate and they never had to really go through this. I've seen uh, people go through the end of their freshman, sophomore year, whatever, junior year, and it never really ended like this. This is, this is a lot different. This is something that we, we haven't experienced before. This is something that isn't really a reality we could have ever expected. And you know what? You're right. It's not something that, that we expected. It's not something that we saw coming. And so tonight, I want to take a look at somebody in the Bible who went through an experience, went through an experience that really didn't seem fair, an experience that he wouldn't have ever been able to see coming, something that, that wasn't his fault, something that was difficult. And so if you have your Bible, I want you to turn to Genesis chapter 40. Turn to Genesis chapter 40, and as you go there, I'm going to give you a little bit of a background. And so we're going to talk about a guy named Joseph. Now, maybe you've heard of Joseph before in the Bible. Uh, maybe you haven't. Uh, not Joseph, that was Jesus' dad, but Joseph from further back in Genesis, first book of the Bible, Genesis 40. And so Joseph uh, had a lot of siblings. He had a lot of brothers. 
and uh, Joseph was actually a, a favorite of his father's. And so this made uh, his brothers mad at him to the point where they actually came up with a, a scheme to, to have him killed. Then they kind of changed that, and they actually ended up selling him into slavery. And he, he goes through this journey of life that's, that's pretty difficult. It's pretty crazy. Uh, after being put into slavery, he kind of got out of that, but he was accused of something falsely that he didn't do. And as a result, he was put into prison. And that's where we're going to kind of uh, launch into, or what's, what we're going to look at uh, tonight is this moment where he's in prison. And while he's in prison, it says that two people join him. And these two people are people who kind of work for, for Pharaoh. And one of them is a cupbearer, and the other is a baker. Now, uh, a cupbearer is something we don't really hear about now, but what this meant was that he would kind of uh, bring uh, Pharaoh his cup. He would take a sip of it to make sure it was safe for, for Pharaoh to drink. And then uh, a baker, you can kind of put together what that means. And so they were, were put into prison with him. Now for them, they were, I mean, to be a cupbearer and a, a baker was actually a pretty uh, elevated status. And so for them to be put into prison with Joseph means they would have been suspected of doing something uh, pretty bad, something that was very wrong. And uh, it's never really quite said, but the belief is that perhaps they were sus suspected of conspiring against Pharaoh, of maybe trying to poison Pharaoh, as these are people who were in control of his food and uh, his drink. And then this is what it says in Genesis chapter 40, verse 5, as they begin to interact with Joseph. It says this, While they were in prison, Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker each had a dream one night, and each dream had its own meaning. When Joseph saw them the next morning, he noticed that they both looked upset. Why do you look so worried today, he asked them. And they replied, We both had dreams last night, but no one can tell us what they mean. Interpreting dreams is, is God's business. It's, interpreting dreams is, is for God, Joseph replied. Go ahead and tell me your dreams. See, see Joseph in this moment saying, hey, only God can really interpret dreams for you, but tell me your dream and I'll allow God to, to speak through me to, to see if he will reveal to me what your dream means. And so uh, the cupbearer starts to tell Joseph what his dream was. And after telling him, Joseph replies and tells the cupbearer that the meaning of his dream is that in three days, he's actually going to be restored to his former position. He's going to be cupbearer for, for Pharaoh again. And so after revealing this to him, Joseph has one request. He says, when you're restored to that position, please don't forget me. Remember me. Be kind to me. Tell the Pharaoh about me. I want to be out of this prison. I was put in here for the wrong reasons. I shouldn't be in here. When you're restored there, can you just remember me? And then after hearing this, the, the baker then was like probably feeling pretty good. Like, hey, that's a good result of a dream meeting. Uh, let me tell you mine. And he shares his. And uh, after sharing it, Joseph replies to him and he told the baker, well, your dream actually means in three days you're going to be killed. He didn't really probably get uh, the same excitement out of the news that he heard. But that's what he told him. And then it tells us this down in uh, chapter 20, verse tw or chapter 40, verse 20. It says this, Pharaoh's birthday came three days later, and he prepared a banquet for all his officials and staff. He summoned his chief cupbearer and chief baker to join the other officials. He then restored the chief cupbearer to the former position or to his former position so he could hand again Pharaoh his cup. But Pharaoh killed the chief baker. He had him impaled just as Joseph had predicted when he interpreted his dream. Pharaoh's chief cupbearer, however, forgot all about Joseph, never giving him another thought. And so think about where Joseph's at right now. Think about what he's feeling. He, he was right. God spoke to him, revealed what these dreams uh, meant to these guys, and the one request he had wasn't fulfilled. And all he was saying is, Dude, if, if you get out of here, you have the opportunity to help me. You can get me out of prison, which is what Joseph wanted. He wanted to be out of the situation that he was in. As you continue reading, it actually tells us that two years went by. Two years that, that Joseph was still stuck in this prison. And I'm sure he's thinking in this moment like, God, I listen to you. I'm, I'm faithful to you. I honor to you. I point others to you. Why is this happening? 
Why am I still here? What is the point in all of this? And can I even trust that you're going to continue to, to, to come through, that you're going to continue to work? And so two years went by. And as you think about two years, I want you to think about how long that go, ago that was. Think about the teachers that you had two years ago. Think about uh, two years ago, uh, Mason Ramsey had just become famous for yodeling in Walmart. If that gives you an idea of, of how long ago that was. And he was stuck in this prison for that long. And then uh, something happens. Pharaoh has a dream. And he shares this dream, but nobody can interpret it. And when this happens, two years later, suddenly the cupbearer is reminded in that moment of Joseph. In fact, he, he, it says in there that, that he replies and he says, Today I'm reminded of my shortcomings, that I forgot about this man. And so he, he explains the story to, to Joseph and he, he tells him how uh, when he was in prison, Joseph was able to interpret his dream. And so the Pharaoh, or Pharaoh sends for Joseph to come and he shares his dream with him. And Joseph is able to interpret what his dreams mean. And he's even able to give him some advice as to how to respond to the dreams that he had. And then it says this uh, in Genesis 41, 39 through 40. This is how Pharaoh responds to Joseph. It says, then Pharaoh said to Joseph, since God, that's so key, since God, it's still reminding that it's really God that's working. Since God revealed the meaning of the dreams to you, clearly no one else is as intelligent or wise as you are. You will be in charge of my court and all my people will take orders from you. Only I, sitting on my throne, will have a rank higher than yours. Think about this moment. Think about what just happened. In the midst of all this craziness, Joseph just went from prison to a palace. He went from like the lowest status you could have to, to being right up there at the top, right? Right there with Pharaoh. And I want you guys to think about what this can mean for our lives. When we're going through something difficult, as, as we see Joseph going through something difficult, as we see Joseph being faithful to what God tells him to do, but still being in a, a difficult season, I want you to think about your life and realize that while you may just want out, God may be calling you to something even greater. All Joseph wanted was to be out of prison. And that didn't happen as quickly as he had hoped it happened. But when the story unfolded, not only was he brought out of prison, but he was brought to an elevated status, something greater than he ever expected. God was working behind the scenes, even when Joseph might not have been able to see it, even when Joseph may not have understood what was going on. And so that's the bottom line of this message that I think is so important for us to grasp, so important for us to hold on to, is that when you don't understand what you're going through, trust that God is working for your good. When you don't understand what you're going through, trust that God is working for your good. Romans 8, 28 tells us this, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. And now that sounds great, and, and, and maybe we've accepted that and we received that, but I think in the midst of going through difficult times, we still try and figure things out. We still try and wrap our mind around why something's happening and, and how we can get out of this. And uh, I want to give you guys a challenge as you think about this a couple challenges, a couple things to do. Instead of struggling to find the point in, in the pain or in the point in the difficult season you're in, I think it's important for us to think about how can we trust God and trust that God is working for our good. And so I want to give you guys a couple things to do. The first one is this. In the midst of those seasons, I just want to challenge you to exercise faith. Choose to believe and trust God even when you may not feel like it, even when it may be difficult for you. I'd encourage you to say what you know, not what you feel in that moment. And so that may mean stopping in a moment of difficulty where the reality is you're sitting there and you're struggling to trust that God is in control. You're struggling to trust. You're having some doubts. You're having some questions. What if you just go to God, pray to God, and just say, God, you are good no matter what, and you have everything in control. Sometimes as, as we follow God, there's going to be some things that, that are just difficult for us, that we have to wrestle through, that we have to get through. You know, even Jesus, before he went to the cross, uh, prayed to his father and said, if you're willing, take this cup from me. But he said, your will be done, not mine. And he continued to, be, he continued to trust. He continued to be faithful. He continued to follow. 
And so I encourage you guys, even when it's hard, even when you're having some doubts, you're qu- having some questions, exercise faith. The second thing I want to encourage you to do is look for the good. Look for the good. It's, it's, it's natural in a difficult season of our life to just want that season to be over with. Maybe you're here and you're just like, I'm sick of this whole quarantine season. I'm sick of this. I just want to be on to the next thing. I just want to be done with school. I just want to be whatever it is. It's natural to just want a season to be over with. But when you pause and when you take a step back and you look, you may be able to learn something. You may be able to learn something about yourself, something about, about others. And I think the reality is in these difficult seasons, God may want to work, through, or work in you through the process. It may not always be fun. It may be difficult. As I was talking about with that puzzle, it may be frustrating when you get to that part and you're like, oh, I don't even want to do this anymore. Sometimes the process doesn't feel real fun when you're in it. But at the end, when we, when we, uh, you know, when we finish that puzzle, it feels good, we're done. And sometimes we're going through a process. We just need to, to, to let God work in us, look for the good in that moment, look how he may be uh, changing us, how he may be working in us to bring us to something greater. We just need to look for the good in those moments. And then here's the third thing. Seek encouragement. When, when you lose sight of the truth that God is working for your good, lean on someone else. Find somebody else that you can talk to. Find somebody else that you can go to and say, hey, I, I know God is good and I know that God's working in my life and I know that we can trust God, but I just gotta be honest right now, that's kind of hard for me. I'm struggling with this. I'm trying to get through this. I'm trying to, to, to navigate this situation. And there's just some things that are weighing me down. That's okay. Sometimes we need to lean on other people, other people that God is gonna use in our lives to work in, in and through us. And so, hey, I wanna ask you guys a couple things. I'm gonna give you a challenge. I'm gonna give you something actually that I did the other night. And I want you to know something here. If you're here and, and you're watching this and through this season that we're in, you're feeling a little discouraged, you're feeling a little overwhelmed, I want you to know that that's okay. If you're in this season, you're like, you know what? I actually don't mind this. Things are going pretty good. Like I'm, I'm doing okay. Like I'm good with how things are. That's okay too. It's okay to be where you're at. And I wanna challenge, I wanna give you an encouragement. I wanna share with you something that I did just the other night. So if you're, if you're feeling a little discouraged in the midst of all this, uh, I want to give you uh, something to think about, something to do. So the other night as I was processing, working through this, I took a piece of paper out. And on that piece of paper, I just wrote, or I drew uh, a puzzle piece. And here's the reality. Uh, all of us are kind of in this season together, but all of us our lives look a little different right now from one another. While there's some things we may have in common that we're all maybe stuck in our houses to some degree and uh, some things are going on uh, and there's some things we have in common, the reality is we also have a lot of things that we're experiencing individually. And it's important for us to, to think about how those things may be influencing us. And maybe the thing that's bringing us discouragement, the thing that's bringing us down isn't even necessarily the quarantine or, or that part of the season. Maybe that's bringing it to the surface. Or maybe it is something that has been caused by this quarantine, whether it's uh, a family member who lost a job, somebody who's sick, uh, just the lack of being able to get out and be around friends. But the other night, I was trying to process this and figure out what's really been weighing me down, what's going on in my mind. And I started to write. And uh, this actually isn't the paper that I did it on because I got a lot more specific and uh, wanted to write some things down and you probably wanna be able to see it anyways. And you may not be able to see these words either, but I'd encourage you to take this out and process what you're going through right now and write down some of the things that are weighing on you. Maybe it's something that you're worried about. I'm worried about what school is gonna look like next fall when I go to college. I'm wanting to get out there and play baseball or, or get around my friends. I'm, I'm thinking about my grandma right now. Um, I'm thinking about or I'm anxious about, list what it is for you, something that you're lacking. Maybe it's something you're insecure about that's, that's weighing you down. 
and write those things down. Start to think about what are the things that you're thinking about that are weighing on your mind. Because if you do this, I think a couple things will happen. I think in the midst of this, you can respond in a couple ways. One of them is you can also add to that piece what are maybe some things that are going okay that you can be thankful for. But also, you can take these things that you identify and take them to a small group leader. Take them to a friend. Take them to a mom or dad or whoever it is and just say, hey, these are some of the things that I'm dealing with right now that I just, I need to share them with somebody. I need to talk with somebody about them. And I I need somebody who can just offer me a little bit of an encouragement, maybe because they've been through something similar or, or because they can just say, hey, I'm going through that too. I get it. You're not alone. Can I be honest? This seek encouragement piece is not something I'm always great at. But I think it's something that's so important for us to realize is needed at times. And so I encourage you guys, think about those three options. Think about those three things, those three steps. Exercise faith. Look for the good and seek encouragement. And remember this, that when you don't understand what you're going through, you can trust that God is working for your good. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the fact that that you know all, that you're working all things together for our good. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to trust in that. God, I pray that you would help us to lean on one another, to seek encouragement from one another. Lord, I pray that you would help us to to look to you for answers and to look to you um, to help work in our lives, work in our heart, work in, in everything that you need to, to take us to something greater that you have planned for us, God. Help us to trust in that. Help us to follow you and help us to remember that you're in control and that we can trust that you're working for the good of those who love you. God, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you guys for joining us. We will see you next week.